Welcome to the Tamworth Country Music Festival 2011. <laughs> no bull, just real country. Listen to the music on the screen. I love my country. Well, again, the people you meet here in Tamworth, Ann Kirkpatrick, how you doing? I'm doing very well. And I assure everyone that that is just water in there. And it's just what you need here. It's very hot up in Tamworth as usual. And uh, this time of the year, it's either boiling hot or else it's, we, we can be thankful it's not flooding, I suppose. Well, everywhere else is. I know, it's just uh, been heartbreaking uh, to see what's happening in Queensland. Yep. A lot of people can't come down for the festival. And um, so, but there's still heaps of people here. Well, there is, and the only difference is this year it's easier for me to get a car park than other years. It's a nice change, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. It's a but nice change. even though there's less people here, I still think country music in Australia has had a great year and is growing. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Absolutely, and um, Tamworth is Australia's country music capital, has such a heritage. Mm. Such a great heritage. Um, we, all the artists, and I love coming to Tamworth every year to catch up with everybody. And, um, you know, this is where it started um, and I think it should always remain here. Mm. Now, your family has had a massive influence on Australian country music and yeah. uh, a lot of the artists we see today uh, regard your family as the main inspiration for the work that they do now. Well, I'm so proud of my mum uh, and dad, Slim and Joy. I mean, they helped start the um, Tamworth Country Music Festival mm. along with Max Ellis and John yep. Minson. And um, 50 years of travelling around the country. And uh, they, I, I know they inspired mm. a lot of people to get out on the road, like the yeah. Chambers and his family, the Dead Ringer Band, and look mm. where, what's happened there with Casey. Yeah. And, uh, I have people come up to me all the time and say what an inspiration. And they've you know, got into country music after listening and seeing what my dad had done. Mm. But the thing I love about it is, obviously, um, uh, your mum and dad were heavily involved and successful artists in their own right, yeah. but you've carved your own niche as your own person with your own style doing your own work, and I think that is uh, absolutely beautiful. It's like almost like an evolution. Well, I grew up in the family show, learnt the ropes from the best of them, and uh, like every young person in my 20s, I wanted to get out and make a mark on my own. Yep. And uh, yeah, 13 solo albums later, um, I've just released um, my best of collection this year, the anthology. I would have called it Baker's Dozen. <laughs> Baker's Dozen. It had to be anthology. Oh, of course, of course. It had to be anthology. <laughs> but I waited a long time to put this out. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> About 13 uh, albums. Yeah, that's right. And um, But yes, it's, I've seen a lot of changes here at Tamworth. Mm. Uh, I was here with the first awards in the Old Town Hall went to um, oh, the, under the big top at one stage, to yep. the rodeo ground, and now we're out at the trek, thank goodness. And uh, it's been a lot of changes. And it's a very healthy scene at the mm. moment. A lot of younger people coming up, and uh, there's such a breadth of music now in the country music scene. So with the Golden Guitar Awards in particular, um, I mean, the town hall is an absolutely gorgeous building. Do you think that same vibe and energy that was around in those early days, that same excitement, has carried over after all these years? Oh, look, if you were there on the awards night, I think it's the fans that make the real excitement. You know, mm -hmm. They really do. So, no, it's still a very, very exciting night. It's the pinnacle of the week, two weeks. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's still very exciting. And have the Golden Guitars gotten bigger or smaller? They've actually remained exactly the same. They're very true to the original. Uh, the same fellow is involved in making them. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, I met him the other day. Norm, gosh, I can't think of his second name now, but uh, uh, he and John Minson used to make them together and he took over from John quite a while mm. back. Now, is your mum coming to the festival? Mum's always here. She arrives, uh, yes, mum will be here very shortly. Mm. And she's staying for the rest of the week in the awards. Yep. Well, wow, because I've, I've got to say that she just still has the most amazing warmth and energy about her, and she's 80 My mum, we had a big celebration, 80 years old last year yep. here at the festival. We had a big Happy Birthday Joy concert. Yep. Uh, my mum is a real inspiration, still oh, full she of is. energy and very involved in uh, many things, including the Slim Dusty Foundation, mm. getting the museum up and running in Kelsey. Yep. And such a big heart too. But I think that's genetic from what I hear. <laughs> well, you know, when we're on the road, 
travelling, it was like a big family travelling, all the band and the side acts and my mum and dad. Yep. It's always like that. Mum and dad have always been like that. Uh, whoever works with them and around it, it's a family atmosphere. Mm. So enough about your family, let's talk about you. What exciting things are you doing in the world? Well, I'm just out promoting my new Best Of release anthology, which was released last August. So I've got a concert here in Tamworth, at the yep. Long Yard, and uh, I'm just out doing gigs promoting that. So when you release something like an anthology, yeah. I mean, um, do you find that as an emotional journey for you, remembering when you first released each and every one of those albums going through it? Well, when I was putting it together, of course, um, brought back a lot of memories. The musicians that played on the al on the tracks, the different. I've I've been so lucky to work with an amazing range of producers and musicians, mm. and yeah, it brought back a lot of memories. So, um, uh, and it was just good to draw it all together because a lot of my albums are now unavailable. Yeah. My first album on vinyl, you see, I go back to the vinyl. Nothing wrong with that. I still think there is an amazing sound that comes from a record. I play a lot of vinyls at home. Yep. I love them. And they were record covers. <laughs> 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 they were great. You could put, I mean, it was really some lovely art on them. Back when B-side actually meant something. Yes, there you go. Yes. Mm. Fantastic. Now, I'm actually really, really excited uh, to pick up a copy of uh, Anthology because you've just had some amazing songs over your entire career, which is still going. Just because you release an anthology doesn't mean that's it. Well, You've still had, got a lot of music yeah, there. Yeah, we, we had a couple of new tracks on the, um, on the anthology. Mm. A couple of tra new tracks that I recorded with um, Bill Chambers. Yep. We got together and did a bit of writing and um, did a duet. We're very thrilled it's in the finals for the vocal collaboration. Oh, so wonderful. It's great. Do you find your music over time and, and is autobiographical? Um, oh, different songs have been, mm. not all of them obviously, but um, uh, there was a song, Travelling Still Always Will, which was a title track of a duet album that I did yep. with my dad. Um, and I actually wrote that about their travelling and pioneering life together. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me, Anne Cooper. Thank you. Thank you.